This is the new 2025 Toyota 4Runner, and it's amazing how long I've been waiting to say those words. I love the 4Runner, and I love the current model, but it's been on sale for 15 years now, and it's starting to get a little old. Well, now a new one is here, and today I'm going to take you on the most thorough tour yet of the new 4Runner and show you all of its quirks and features. Today's video is brought to you by Cars and Bids, my online enthusiast car auction site that recently sold this and this and this and this and this. All right, time for a thorough tour of the quirks and features of the new 4Runner, starting with a little overview. The 4Runner has been an iconic SUV nameplate in Toyota's lineup since the 1980s. It's always been kind of a rough-and-tumble, mid-sized, off-roader SUV, and in recent years, it's experienced a surge in popularity with an increase in interest in off-roading. The 4Runner, like I mentioned, now 15 years old in its current form, but it just keeps getting more more popular and more desired by enthusiasts who want to take it on the trails. Now, the new 4Runner will be the sixth generation of this model, and it's built in Japan on the same global truck architecture, the same platform that underpins a lot of Toyota's new trucks, the Sequoia, the Land Cruiser, the Tundra, and the Tacoma, and now the 4Runner as well. So, with those basics out of the way, let's talk powertrains. The 4Runner will be offered with a choice between two engines, and both are 2.4-liter turbocharged four-cylinders. The departure of a V6 from the 4Runner lineup will surely cause some consternation, maybe even some shock and surprise, but before you get too upset, listen to the details. So, the base level powertrain, 2.4 liter turbocharged 4-cylinder, makes about 280 horsepower and about 320 pound-feet of torque, which are pretty healthy numbers. Now, this engine will be standard on the lower trims and on the middle trims of the 4Runner, and I'll cover all of the trims here in a little bit. But, if you want more power, Toyota offers it. The very same engine is available on the higher trims with a hybrid component that boosts power to about 325 horses, and it boosts torque to 465 pound-feet, which are pretty healthy numbers, even though it's just a hybrid four-cylinder, which I'm sure some people will complain about. In fact, Toyota says that that engine is the most powerful ever installed in any 4Runner V6, V8 from any previous year, and the towing capacity is a respectable 6,000 pounds despite the hybrid four-cylinder situation. So, it's still going to be a beast, just not with a V6. Next up, let's talk exterior, with some exterior quirks and features, but we'll start with the styling. Now, I've just seen the new 4Runner for the very first time about 20 minutes ago, so I'm still digesting this, as I'm sure are you. But I gotta say, my first impression is it looks looks fantastic. It is unmistakably Forerunner in its profile and its overall appearance, but it has also clearly been modernized compared with the outgoing model, which really was starting to look old. It has exactly everything you'd want to see in a Forerunner. Toughness and brawn and the general overall look and size of the Forerunner, but they don't take any weird risks or do anything stupid with the design. It's really a great redesign in this era of strange, <laughs> bizarre styling choices by some, and very small, subtle evolutions by others, this is a big enough change, and yet they didn't screw it up. Which is a tall order for such a beloved vehicle, but they did reasonably well. So, we've covered general exterior styling, but let's talk quirks and features, starting with one of my very favorites, this exterior glass panel for the cargo area. You can see the top is curved to sort of wrap around the roof, which is an old-school Forerunner design detail. Going back to the very first model and the second generation 4Runner. They had that, and now it's been brought back for the newest one, which really contributes to the overall look of 4Runner. And on the subject of glass, yes, the rear window still rolls down. Power automatic roll down, just like in previous 4Runner models. That's a feature a lot of people really love. Frankly, I wish a lot more cars had it, 
but they don't, but the Forerunner does. Another interesting quirk on the outside of the new Forerunner is lighting. Starting with taillights, you can see they're kind of cool looking. They're sort of red striped when the taillights are on, and these kind of thin stripes. It's very distinctive, very interesting, and certainly cool. And the turn signal also blinks red, and it's a fairly small piece here, just a small horizontal bar integrated into the stripes of the taillights in back. Now, as for lighting up front, also some interesting quirks and features, particularly with this Forerunner, as it's the off-roader TRD Pro model, and so it gets some cool light touches, which I'm sure will be different depending on the version you get. But for the Pro, you have a cool new running light signature, which you can see here. It's this pale orange light that's illuminated below the regular headlights. That's always on as the daytime running light, and it certainly gives a distinctive flare to this truck. Again, I suspect probably distinctive to the TRD Pro. Also distinctive to the Pro, if you look over on the passenger side headlight, when you turn it on, it illuminates a small little piece that says TRD. If you go over to the driver side and look in that exact same spot, it illuminates a small piece that says Pro. And so if you look across the entire front of the truck and see those little light up spots, it says TRD Pro, of course, to match the trim of this truck, which is pretty Pretty cool. Again, I'll get more into all of the different trim levels in a little bit. As for sizing, the new Forerunner is about three inches longer than the old model, so it's a little bit bigger on the outside. And in terms of capability, Toyota says an approach angle of about 32 degrees and a departure angle of about 24 degrees. Unclear exactly which model that refers to, but it's a reasonably strong number for off-roaders who want to take their Forerunner out on the trail. And next up, we move inside the new Forerunner, and I must first apologize for the mud in all of the images you're about to see. This truck had been beautifully cleaned by the Toyota people here, but then it rained in this area where we are. It's all muddy, and so you will see mud. People often complain about that. I'm sorry. It's just the way it works. After all, this is an off-roader SUV, and so we're off-road. But open up the door in the new Forerunner, and the first thing you notice is the door panel, which has characteristic Forerunner toughness, a lot of right angles, and you can see two different layers of storage, one kind of higher up and one a little bit lower down. Of course, this one being a TRD Pro, you also have that badge there to remind you of your cool off-roaderness. But open up the door, move further inside, and one of the first things you'll notice is that the seats have the same sort of camo trim as my Sequoia, which I recently complained about in a different video. The seats still have that trim. It probably can't be removed, just like in my Sequoia, which... I guess whatever. Thankfully, the fenders in the TRD Pro 4Runner do not have that same camo trim, which I gotta say looks pretty good, and I have a suspicion I'll be wrapping my Sequoia fenders to match the look of these. But anyway, next we move further inside, and I'm gonna start with some of the features in here, specifically with the off-roader equipment. So, four-wheel drive. You can see this switch here will adjust between two-wheel drive, four high, and four low. And it's kind of weird to operate. You push this button on the side, to basically unlock it, and then you switch the switch to whichever one of those items you want. Of course, two-wheel drive high is kind of the default when you're just cruising around town. Now, interestingly, the new 4Runner will be available in three different drivetrain configurations. You can still get it in base, rear-wheel drive, two-wheel drive only with no four-wheel drive component. Or you can get it with full-time four-wheel drive, which is always on. Or you can get it like this truck is equipped with part-time four-wheel drive, meaning that it's in two wheel drive until you shift into four wheel drive when you need it. Now, in addition to that, you can see on top of the four wheel drive rocker switch, there's a big dial here, a very big dial. And right now it's configured to control the drive mode that you're in in your Forerunner. But you can adjust exactly what it's controlling by pressing the buttons on top. So if you want it to control your multi-terrain select system, that's MTS, you push that and then the dial has a new purpose and you can adjust what type of surface you're driving on, and the truck will respond accordingly. You can also see that this new 4Runner still has crawl control, which is a fantastic off-road kind of cruise control, auto-driving, get-yourself-unstuck feature that Toyota's been offering in its top-tier off-road models for years. And this new 4Runner has it, at least in TRD Pro trims, and I suspect other versions as well. Next, we move on to these buttons here in the center console, and you can see one is marked 
Jeep Stabie bar with a little X next to some wheels, that will automatically disconnect your stabilizer bar. This is a first for the 4Runner, being able to do this with the push of a button, and it's kind of a neat feature that obviously enhances your off-road capability. Now, directly next to that, you have your rear differential lock, which is standard on the TRD Pro and a new trim called Trail Hunter, which I'll cover soon. Of course, that also enhances your off-road capability. And directly next to that, there is a button marked View, which turns on a new feature for the 4Runner. It's called the Multi-Terrain Monitor, and it allows you to use the camera system to view obstacles that are coming up on the road in front of you. This, of course, will enhance your ability when you're off the pavement to see what's coming up and adjust to conditions accordingly, and it will display what it's seeing on this giant center screen in the middle of the center control stack. And speaking of this giant center screen, it really is giant, and it's the new infotainment system that's rolling out in basically all of the other Toyota models. The 4Runner has kind of been stuck in an old era with old technology, but now it gets the newest, latest, largest infotainment screen, Toyota's latest tech. And frankly, it's pretty good. I've reviewed it in many other Toyota models. It's very responsive, very intuitive, simple to use. Move your finger around the screen, it responds quickly, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, standard and very compatible and easy to use with this system. It really is a great infotainment system. And speaking of screens in the new 4Runner, you also get a new gauge cluster screen, which is also fantastic. I really love this system, which is an upgrade over previous Toyota models that I haven't quite loved as much because they weren't that configurable. Well, now it is. You can configure all three panels, left, center, and right, to show you all different types of displays, whether it's a map or the music you're listening to or trip data or eco-friendly data or tire pressures or all sorts of different stuff. It can all be configured in this gauge cluster screen so you can show exactly what you want to display directly in your field of vision at all times. It's a really excellent gauge cluster display. And since we're on the subject of screens, there is one more kind of hidden screen in this car, and that would be the rear view mirror. You can see right now it's just a traditional mirror, but if you flip this switch, it becomes a camera with a screen that's showing what's going on behind you. Now, there's going to be some forerunner purists who say, well, that's just another thing that'll break. But you'd be surprised how useful this feature is. When you load up your 4Runner with people, dogs, and gear, and you can't see out the back window, just flip that switch, and suddenly you have a perfect field of vision behind you. I have this feature in my Sequoia. I love it, and I really wish that other automakers offered it. But right now, it's only Toyota and a couple of others. And since we're talking about technology, it's also worth pointing out that all new 4Runner models come standard with Toyota Safety Sense 3.0, which is Toyota's name for its suite of safety features that basically includes everything. That's adaptive cruise control, that's lane tracing assist, so it'll go around highway curves for you, it's blind spot monitoring, it's automatic high beams, a long list of standard safety equipment in any trim of 4Runner, even if you only get the base level model. That's pretty impressive. But anyway, next we move past the technology and on to the rest of this interior to discuss, well, let's start with how tough it is in here. You don't have any sweeping curves anywhere. There's no wood or luxury touches. Instead, it's all right angles and upright dashboard, just like you would expect from a tough Toyota truck situation in the interior. And toughness is further emphasized with, well, for example, the floor mats, which have this tire tread pattern going over the earth. And over on the passenger side of the dashboard, you have this giant Toyota lettering printed on this carbon fiber look trim that's cool and tough and off-roady. You also have this big grab handle here on the passenger side that's rubberized so the passenger can hold on when the driver starts to do crazy stuff off-road. Now next to that grab handle you have a rather useful storage pocket in here. This could be obviously a place where you put your smartphone and especially useful because it's directly next to some charge ports as you can see so you can charge it up there too. And also next to the wireless charging pad in this car where you can stick your phone and have it 
will charge wirelessly. Next up, another cool interior quirk slash feature. At the top of the dashboard, you have this. It looks like a stereo speaker for the stereo system in the truck, and it is, but you can also press this eject button and then it comes out and it's a portable speaker that you can take with you to a campsite on a trail, whatever, which is a pretty cool feature. You always have a portable Bluetooth speaker with you since it's integrated into your dash. And another cool touch in this truck over on the passenger side of the dashboard, of course you have a glove box here, but if you look higher up, there's also a little tray where you can store stuff. This isn't closing or locking, but if you're on the trail and you want to put something down for just a second, that's another neat spot where you can just drop it off. And next up, also worth pointing out in this interior, the dials to adjust stuff. In the center control stack, the dials to adjust the climate control, absolutely massive. Same deal with the volume dial and basically all of the buttons. The theory here is you can use them with work gloves. You don't have to take them off. You're out somewhere in the, in the frigid cold. You got big gloves on. You can still adjust all this stuff, but they also look cool and again, contribute to the feeling of toughness inside this truck. Now we move on to the left side of the steering wheel and you can see several rows of buttons over here. The top row is some fairly standard stuff, your power tailgate, your auto high beams, controls for the regular things. Below that, you have a few auxiliary switches. You can hook those up to accessories if you want to install them in your truck. So for example, a winch, if you want to install one of those, you have a switch for it and you don't have to wire up some janky looking aftermarket switch that doesn't really fit with the look of the truck or another light bar, whatever it is that you want. And speaking of light bars, it's also worth pointing out that you have the control for your TRD light bar right here. You can press this and turn it on and it illuminates a giant horizontal LED light bar up in the front of the truck. Now, these only come on when you turn on your high beams. You can't just drive around with your light bar on in normal driving, but it does do a pretty good job of illuminating the world when you have your high beams on and you're on a dark country road or a dark off-road trail trying to find your campsite. And next up, we move on to the back seat in the 4Runner. You can see this second row back seat is a full bench in this particular TRD Pro, and it has the same camo treatment as the rest of the <laughs> interior, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but at least it's relatively subtle. Now, a few interesting items back here worth pointing out. For one, you can see in the center, you got your rear climate vents, which is nice to have, and directly below that, you have two different USB-C ports and also a house household charge port next to them where you can plug in your regular devices. It's cool to have a household port within the interior, the actual seats, not just the cargo area, in case you want to plug in a blender, for example. Not that you would, maybe you would. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, you also have the door panels, which are pretty cool. You have this little storage compartment down here, which is kind of sized perfectly for smartphones, and you have a cup holder that's well integrated and molded into the door pocket. A lot of times I see door pocket cup holders, but they're sort of vaguely cup holders, and you get the sense that a cup would fall down or roll around, but not here. That's a pretty good idea, especially if you're on the trail and riding around in the back. Now, one other item worth pointing out with the second row, it's not exactly huge back here. You got space, but I have the front seat about where I would position if I was sitting in it, and my knees are kind of up against it. My head is sort of up against the ceiling. Despite this vehicle's kind of growing size over the years, you don't have an enormous amount of room in back. You do have decent space, though, in back. I mean, an adult can sit back here fairly comfortably, but if you're looking for some giant vehicle where people can lay out, you're going to want to get something a little bigger, I guess in the Sequoia or maybe Tundra realm. However, with that said, one nice benefit of the 4Runner, the second row seat folds very easily. You just pull on this latch, the backrest folds down, kind of pull it again, and then it folds forward. And I mentioned this is important because this gives access to the third row. This particular 4Runner is not equipped with one, but the new 4Runner will offer an available third row seat. The 4Runner has kind of gone yes and no with third row seats over the years, but this newest one does have one available in case you want to take your 
whole family off-roading. And next up, we move on to the cargo area in the new Forerunner. But before we get there, let's talk again about the roll down rear window. Now, you can open it on the inside with this switch in the ceiling. You push it down, it rolls down, you pull it up, it rolls up. Pretty standard, but you can also open it up from outside the Forerunner, which is pretty cool. You got these two buttons here and this panel over the license plate. Obviously, they're shaped like arrows. So the top one points up, so it rolls the window up, which is pretty cool and the bottom one points down and so it rolls the window down. It's pretty intuitive and it's neat to be able to do that from the outside. In case you have some smaller item you want to load in, you don't want to open up the whole tailgate, you can just drop the window pretty easily. Now, these buttons also serve as lock and unlock for the outside of the car. So if you just do a quick tap on the upper button, it locks all the doors and you can walk away. Quick tap on the lower button will unlock the doors, whereas if you hold down the buttons, it opens up the rear window. You can also, of course, open up the full tailgate, power-operated tailgate, and it opens up and reveals the cargo area in the new 4Runner. Now, one big complaint about the new Sequoia has been that the cargo area load height is too high. And in the case of the Sequoia, apparently that's due to some hybrid componentry, battery architecture underneath the cargo area. That looks like it's going to be the same situation here. I don't find it a problem in my new Sequoia, but some people do, and they may also in the 4Runner since it is fairly high. But one nice benefit, the outer edge of the load floor actually lifts itself up and out so you can put smaller items in here. It's like a little extra storage panel at the front of the cargo area. Same deal on the other side. This panel lifts up and again it can be a little storage compartment for putting little items in there if you want to. Now, other items worth pointing out in the cargo area of the new 4Runner. For one, you got another household-style power outlet, which again adds to the practicality. You're on the trails, you want to plug in an air compressor, fill up your tires, you can do it back here pretty easily. You also have some storage pockets over on the side. Now, these pockets are obviously mainly going to be used by third-row passengers in 4Runners equipped with a third row as cup holders or rear storage. But even if you don't have the third row, they're pretty useful to have little extra storage compartments on the side of the cargo area that add a little extra practicality if you want a place where you can put gear and not have it roll around in back. And finally, I want to talk market positioning, pricing, and trim levels with the new 4Runner. Like I have already mentioned, this particular 4Runner is the TRD Pro. That's the tough off-roady version, and it is one of nine trim levels that the new 4Runner is now offering. The trim levels are, there is the base SR5, as there always has been, then the TRD Sport, the TRD Sport Premium, the TRD Off-Road, the TRD Off-Road Premium, the Limited, the TRD Pro, the Platinum, and the Trail Hunter. Now, the two big new trims for the 4Runner this year are the Trail Hunter and the Platinum. So let's cover them. Trail Hunter is going to be an overlanding focused version of the 4Runner, whereas the TRD Pro is for technical off-roading in the toughest possible spots. The Trail Hunter is more for going camping in far-reaching places, the regular overlanding things. And as a result, both Trail Hunter and TRD Pro are heavily off-road equipped, but in slightly different ways. Specifically, the Trail Hunter will have its own suspension shock setup from Old Man Emu. It will have an ARB roof rack for your camping gear, of course. It will have a high mount air intake, so when you go forward rivers, water won't get into your engine. That'll be distinctive to the Trail Hunter. It'll also have rock rails down the sides and more skid plating underneath for added protection, and it will have more interior power availability for charging devices and plugging in other accessories that you might need when you're overlanding and spending days at a time out in the middle of nowhere off the grid. Now, as for the other important new 4Runner trim this year, the Platinum model, that now sits above the Limited if you're looking for the most luxurious 4Runner experience possible. It delivers with blacked out exterior trim as opposed to chrome trim on the Limited, heated rear seats, a nice touch, a heads up display, which will be a nice new modern tech feature for the 4Runner, and automatic windshield wipers. These things aren't high luxury features for a lot of models, but they certainly are for the 4Runner, and the Platinum will have them. 
So that's the new Forerunner. I am very impressed with it. I think it is a fantastic redesign of an iconic vehicle, which is an easy thing to screw up, and it's clear that they haven't. But with all of that said, and all of the praise that I think this vehicle deserves, I'm still a little confused by the whole situation. I don't quite understand exactly where this fits into the Toyota off-road SUV lineup. I was thinking that Toyota would resurrect the 4Runner as an open-top convertible SUV like the Ford Bronco, the Jeep Wrangler, and the original Toyota 4Runner. I figured they would go and compete with those. But instead, the 4Runner and the Land Cruiser seem to share fairly similar positions in Toyota's lineup. Allow me to explain. The new Land Cruiser is 193.8 inches long. The new 4Runner is 194.9. So they are basically the same exact size. The Land Cruiser offers the hybrid turbo four-cylinder engine that is optional in the 4Runner, meaning they're the same size and they offer the same powertrain, which is kind of getting a little unusual. And then there's pricing. The Land Cruiser starts around $57,000 and goes all the way into to the mid $70,000 range. Now, Toyota hasn't announced pricing for the new 4Runner yet, but I figure it's going to be positioned below that, below the Land Cruiser, because the current 4Runner starts around $42,000 and goes up into the high $50,000 range. So you figure the new one is going to get a bit of a price bump and it has some new trim levels at the top. Figure it's going to cost maybe $44,000 to maybe $60,000. And you can see that starts to overlap with the Land Cruiser as well, in size, in powertrain, and in price. And interestingly, the 4Runner is the only one between the two to offer third row seating. So the 4Runner has extra seats, the same powertrain, the same sizing, and it's going to be probably a little less expensive, with most of the same off-road equipment like crawl control, multi-terrain select, and a lot of the suspension upgrades offered on the TRD Pro and Trail Hunter models. Complicating matters further, the Sequoia Sequoia starts around $60,000, and you can get a Sequoia TRD off-road for around sixty-seven, dollars with a much larger body and a full-size third-row seat plus cargo area. And the new Lexus GX starts around $65,000, with similarities to the Land Cruiser in terms of powertrain, sizing, and styling. So if you have about sixty-five dollars to spend on a new off-roader Toyota SUV, there's a lot of choices. Land Cruiser, Sequoia, new 4Runner, Lexus GX, it seems kind of crowded, and I'm surprised they thinly sliced their lineup exactly like this. But they have, and frankly, more choices when it comes to Toyota trucks and SUVs isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially as good as this one seems to be. Now, you'll notice I haven't yet driven the new 4Runner, and I'm not going to be able to. This is just a pre-production model, and we can't take it out on the road. But Toyota says it's going to go on sale later this year year sometime in the fall, and I'm sure I'll be able to get behind the wheel around its on-sale date in order to check out the new 4Runner from the driver's seat and see what the driving experience is like. Frankly, I can't wait. I'm really excited to do that. But for now, without driving it, this is your most thorough tour yet of the new 4Runner and all of its quirks and features.